Hare Krishna. <coughs> Let's start with the 14th chapter today. We welcome all of you for the Gita Amrita Bindu session 85 today. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानत मिरंद ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुमेलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण Three modes bind the soul to the material world. That's a topic for today. Is you all remember in the previous chapter, thirteen uh, chapter, there was a famous verse: huh? "Purusha prakrdeshto hi bhunte prakrde jan gunan karanam guna sangosya sadasat yo nijan masu." There, Lord Krishna said, the tiny purusha jiva, he. Uh, in this world uh, comes with an enjoying mentality and he gets trapped by uh, maya mm-hmm. and he gets sometimes bodies of devatas sometimes bodies of animals mm-hmm. you see this picture here mm-hmm. as you see that these are the three gunas <coughs> which are subordinate to lord krishna but which bind the living beings in this world mm-hmm. so there is karanam guna sangosya krishna said Associating with these three gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas, the jiva gets uh, entangled. Therefore, Arjuna naturally may have a question: What are those three gunas, Krishna? How do they bind the jiva? How can the jiva get liberated? And uh, what are the symptoms of the three gunas? All those questions will be answered in this chapter. 
I can see this is a uh, division of the 14th chapter. Uh, first 13 verses, Krishna is talking about the conditioning of the soul by material gunas. Okay, uh, how the conditioning <coughs> is happening by Satvara Jastamas, and what are the effects of that conditioning, and how to go beyond the three gunas. There's the last part. So in the first uh, four verses, he's talking about uh, if you become fixed in the following knowledge, one attains perfection and one gets liberated. Which means, actually, in the chapters between 7 to 12, already Krishna very beautifully explained about the Bhakti Yoga. Uh, there was no further need of anything else, one may think like that. But Krishna is also teaching us while living in this upside down tree of the material world, which is greatly entangling to the jiva. Besides knowing about the bhakti yoga, one should also know how to walk in this world, how to deal with material nature and the other living entities. If one does not have proper knowledge about this, then one can become a victim of maya in this world. Therefore, Krishna is teaching this last six chapters. Actually, by knowing this knowledge, the jiva can keep himself safe and secure uh, in, his, in the path of his bhakti yoga. So, just as uh, we have to be, just as in the Srimad Bhagavatam, one purpose, purpose says we should be conscious of Krishna and we should be cautious of Maya, both he says. So, uh, the six middle chapters teach about how to be conscious of Krishna. The last six chapters, they teach about divine and demoniac in the 16th chapter. Similarly, here, 14th chapter teaches about the three gunas. So, Krishna is actually enlightening his devotees that don't get allured by the great complicated material world. Just like if you take a paint box, there are round, round paints are kept. You have seen watercolor? That is not very attractive. Just the colors are there. Nobody may look at it for a long time. But on a canvas, if you throw the colors and draw some painting, that painting may charm the heart of people. Hmm. For example, if you draw a picture of a beggar with a very pitiful look, hmm, with a begging bowl in the hand, like that, if somebody has drawn it, you feel like crying when you see that. Hmm. You feel pity. On the other hand, if somebody takes uh, the same paint and draws in another canvas, another painting of a lusty man, lusty woman, hmm, then it evokes another type of emotion hmm, in this world. Similarly, if one draws another painting of a beautiful, natural, scenic beauty of rising sun huh, or a beautiful garden full of flowers, that evokes some feeling of cheerfulness, huh, freshness. So, the watercolor in and of itself uh, cannot, you know, modify our mindset. But when you mix them and draw paintings, they are little. Similarly, the three gunas in this world are combined together uh, with the Prakriti, huh? in such a manner that the living being has specific objects to which he is attracted according to his guna, about which we are going to read today. Huh? That will become very clear for us. If you are in Satyaguna, what are you attracted to? Rajaguna, what are you attracted to? Tamaguna, what are you attracted to? Huh? We can clearly know. And also we can know how to go beyond the three gunas. So this, in this way, this chapter is a very important chapter. I would say, in this day and age, it's all the more important. Huh? Because uh, we are living in the modern day uh, society uh, where we deal with uh, hardcore sense gratification uh, all around us. Mm. We, 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 our life is also very fast paced. It's more in the mode of passion and more in the mode of ignorance. For spirituality, we have to be in sattva. Mm. So living in the city life, how we can come to sattva and how we can go to Vishuddha sattva. So for all that, this knowledge would be very necessary. Mm. So let's begin the first verse. See here, Srila Prabhupada, Bharadeva Devushan, Vishnu Chaktakura, all of them in the 13th chapter, I mentioned this point, the Karanam Guna Sangha, as I told you just now, isn't it? Uh, so then naturally you ask, what is that Guna Sangha? That is explained in this chapter elaborately. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Param Bhuja Prabhakshyami Jnana Nam Jnana Muttamam Yajnyatva Munayaha Sarve Param Siddhi Mito Gataha the Supreme Lord Krishna said, Again, I shall declare to you the supreme wisdom, the best of all knowledge, knowing which all the sages have attained 
the supreme perfection. So here Krishna is telling, he's already given great supreme wisdom before about himself in the 7th to 12th chapter. Very, very beautiful chapters. Now in the 13th chapter, Krishna said, Amanitvam, Adambitvam, by humbly developing knowledge, we can become free from mental entanglement. And then somebody may ask, okay, I will be humble. I want to become free from entanglement. So what knowledge do I need to become, if I am humbly approaching, what knowledge do I need to cultivate? And that is this chapter knowledge, which is about three gunas. Because our entanglement is mainly by these three gunas. Guna also means rope. We are bound by the three ropes. So how to, uh, like imagine if my hands and legs are tied with these three ropes, I just cannot free myself. I need someone who is already not bound by these ropes, like Lord Krishna. And he is giving the knowledge how to untie ourselves and how we can get rid of the three gunas. Hmm? See here, in this 14th chapter, these are the things Krishna explains. What are the modes of nature, how they act, and the lakshanas, characteristics, how they bind us, how, they lib- how we can be liberated. Yeah. So, Balaji Devotion says that this 14th chapter explains gunas are a cause of bondage. And they give three different results. And they can be destroyed by devotion to Krishna. Mm-hmm. You all know that another famous verse. Mm-hmm. That Krishna said also. Uh, in this picture you see on the left side. This material, uh, material energy personified with Durga. She has three ropes by which she is making all the jivas dance according to her tune in one of the three gunas, as you see here. But Krishna says, and she is Mamamaya Duratya. See in that picture, above the three gunas, there is Vishnu picture. Isn't it? Because Lord is above, beyond the three gunas. So by surrendering to Krishna, one can become free from the three gunas. Uh, you know, uh, the, which the jnanis do, uh, these are the lakshana of sattva guna, raja guna, tamma guna. This is entangling, this is not entangling and all that. Huh? When you do that, ultimately that speculation will make us come to the understanding of bhakti yoga. Huh? That is the best thing. Otherwise, uh, speculative uh, philosophical analysis is useless if it doesn't bring us to bhakti. So there are two types of speculation, mental speculation, philosophical speculation. Mental speculation leads to nowhere. Hmm? Philosophical speculation, if you do, keeping this message what Lord Krishna gives in 14th chapter, we will come to the right conclusion. Oh, these three modes are very powerful. We should take shelter of Krishna. And Krishna will take us back to Godhead. Idam jnanam upashitya mamasadharmya magataha sarge pinopajayante pralayena vyatanticha He says, Further, Krishna is glorifying this knowledge uh, by the special fruits we will get by this. What are they? Uh-huh. Understanding chapter will help one to attain liberation and attain the transcendental nature like Krishna. Uh-huh. And then many, many sages have attained this perfection, he says. Uh-huh. So, yeah, this we have already discussed before. Uh-huh. See, when Krishna says, Sad Dharmiyam, if uh, one will attain my own nature, one should know that you know, we will be qualitatively one with Krishna. We, he is Satchitananda, we are Satchitananda. He is eternal, we are eternal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, he will uh, never take birth and we will also never take birth once we go to him. Mm-hmm. Which means that he will never be entangled, we won't be entangled also. But we, are, we will be Arno, he will be Vibhu. Uh, he will be servant and he will be master. That will remain. Mm-hmm. And we will maintain our identity as soul. And his identity will be God. That identity will remain. That Krishna said in that famous verse in the second chapter, Natve vaham jatunasam natmam neme janadipa. Isn't it? These kings and myself and yourself, all of us are eternally individual part and parcels. I mean, you are all individual part and parcels. I am God. Krishna said that. And we will all remain individuals. Hmm? He said that. And then, uh, <clears throat> the knowledge not contaminated by the three modes of material nature, knowing oneself to be on the same platform as Supreme Person. So, in this way, it's not like Mayavadi sense that we become equal to God. That's the wrong understanding. Correct understanding is our, we, are, we become one in quality with the Lord. Yeah. And another important point, uh, Prabhupada says in the purport is, spiritual world is also full of variety. Uh, 
just like material world. But the difference is there is spiritual variety, yet there is material variety. There also there is Yamuna, there are cows and calves, there are Gopas, Gopis, huh? and uh, Nanda, Yashoda, Krishna. Huh? And there's Govardhan Hill, all pastimes are going on. Everything is spiritual. Such is Ananda, everything. Whereas in the material world, everything is made up of Pancham Habud, Earth, Water, Fire, Air, Ether. That's one difference. Another difference, the material world, here the bodies are born, bodies die. There the bodies live eternally. Here there is creation, annihilation. There is no creation, annihilation. Here there is reproduction, there is no reproduction there. And here people are indulging in sense gratification for their own selfish pleasures. There people are engaging in Krishna service. So these are the differences between the two. We will study more about it in the 15th chapter. And there the atmosphere is, atmosphere is uncontaminated, here it is contaminated. Yeah. So, therefore, in order to know about the spiritual world, we need to develop spiritual qualities. So, this 14th chapter will clear up the material qualities. Huh? And then in 15th chapter, we will start speaking about spiritual world. Okay? Yeah. So, in this way, <coughs> the results he is saying that one may attain Sarupya Mukti. See the picture. Here you find uh, Lakshmi Narayana sitting and the servants of Vishnu are serving with 400 form. They look like Vishnu, but they don't have the Sri Vatsachinna in there golden hair in their chest and they don't have Kostuba jewel, what only Lord Vishnu has, the servants won't have. So servants look like 400 form of Vishnu, at the same time they are all servants, you can see them offering arti, offering flowers, doing chamar, they are doing. This kind of Sarupamakti one can attain and the eight qualities of the uh, soul similar to the Lord they can attain. Hmm? And how do we attain this? Upashitya, he said, by taking shelter of Guru. Hmm? Yeah. Not only that, Sarge Pralaye Navyatanti, he said, um, which means uh, at the time of, like you see the picture here, at the time of Pralaya Kal, huh, the, um, uh, all the jivas actually lose their material bodies and they go to the navel of Vishnu and they stay in the navel of Vishnu, isn't it? And then when next uh, Brahma's day starts, again all of them get their bodies and run here and there in Trigunas, isn't it? Whereas this devotee who understands the three gunas and takes shelter of Krishna will go back to Godhead when be with Krishna and never be born again in this world. That's the point. Hmm? They won't suffer at the time of dissolution and they will be uh, back to Godhead. Yeah. And then uh, um, he says here, somebody may argue that, you know, after being freed from material activities, the spiritual entity becomes formless. Some people say, Mm. Actually, you see, once you go beyond the three gunas, you become completely purified. God and soul are one. Like that, some people say, God is formless and you also merge into formlessness. That is the wrong understanding. Uh, like you see in the material variegatedness in the material world. Uh, and uh, then like in negative axis, there is material variety. In the zero, zero, there is no variety, Brahma Jyoti. And in the positive axis, there is spiritual variety. Uh, so, those who are devotees of the Lord, like you see the picture here, you know, Krishna is dancing with Gopas hmm, and playing on his flute. The spiritual world is a joyful place with colorful, colorful variety. You see the cows and calves, hmm, the beautiful land of Chintamani Dham, of Rindaman Dham. Hmm, there are, there's a beautiful description. Chintamani Prakara Sadmasu Kalpa Vriksha Lakshavrite Shusurabhi Ravipalayantam Lakshmi Sahasra Shatasam Brahmasevyamanam Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami He is saying, he is saying Surabi Rabi Palayantam. There are many Surabi cows like you see here. Huh? In the special, which give numberless cows, which give unlimited supply of milk any day, all day. Huh? And the dust is like golden powder there. Their water is like honey. Yeah. Nobody walks there. See, everybody is dancing there. Nobody talks there. Everybody sings there. It's a beautiful spiritual world uh, with full of variegatedness. Uh, like the material world is full of material variety. And the spiritual world is full of spiritual variety. Mm -hmm. That's the point he has made. And uh, so how do we obtain this knowledge? Mm -hmm. In this venture, all knowledge is contaminated by uh, three modes. But Krishna is giving us special knowledge. Lord is giving, God is giving. So that is transcendental knowledge, divine. Mm -hmm. So by developing all the spiritual qualities, we can develop such knowledge. Therefore, we studied about the Avanitva, Madam, Vitva, Mahimsa, those 20 items. Cultivate that and then study this knowledge here from Krishna. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. One another important point, 
now from this session, uh, this section onwards. He says that um, all these gunas uh, and this uh, prakriti, uh, Lord says that Lord is the cause of the combination of prakriti and jiva, how the jiva comes to this world and Lord has arranged the prakriti with all the three gunas variety, he has made the combination possible. Behind this, he is the sakshi, uh, like that well, Badhya Vidyabhushan is saying. Uh, um, and also the Lord speaks about the method of uh, how the field was made a possible for the jiva and the chetragna and the chetra they came together hmm? so this is all made possible by the lord and he even guides prakriti hmm? durga devi how what is to be done what are his instructions to her and then she follows accordingly mama yo nirmahat brahma tasmin garbham dadhamyam sambhava sarva bhutanam tato bhavati bharata lord is saying that all these things, Mama Yonir is saying that the great expense called Prakriti is my womb. In that womb, I place the seed in the form of all the jivas. Uh, uh, and all the jivas get their respective, you know, uh, bodies. So that's called Mahat Brahma because it expands everywhere uh, in all place and time. Total cosmic manifestation. So there are two Prakritis. Dal Prakriti, conscious Prakriti. So jivas like us, we are conscious Prakriti. And Dal Prakriti is uh, eight elements. Bhumi, Rapa, Nala, Vaju, Kama, all those things. Uh, and Krishna is the combiner. He is saying, hmm, one who arranges for these two things to get combined, Prakriti and the tiny Purusha Jiva, uh, to combine that. And Lord also is a seed provider. Look at the picture here. Lord Vishnu is glancing at Durga and through the Shambhu glance, he is giving all the Jivas to her to put in the womb of Prakriti. Hmm? So in this way, uh, why these are said, it's very important, not that the living beings are born from dead matter, like some foolish scientist thing. Huh? Atheistic people think like that. Actually, Lord is giving the seed and Lord is making this combination of Prakriti and Jiva come together and get bodies. Hmm. Yeah. So we are Jiva Prakriti and Lord is giving the seed. He's saying, hmm. Pradhana is the womb and the place which holds all the seeds. Hmm. And it belongs to me. The Lord, is say, Lord says that Lord, creator of millions of universes, all the Jivas belong to him and Prakriti also belongs to him. Yeah. In that uh, great Pradhan, Functioning as a womb, I offer the dhami, multitude of small particles of consciousness, jivas. Like that, like he gave it to the Durga Devi, like that. Sarva yonishu kaunteya murtaya sambhavantiya tasam brahma mahat yonir aham bija pradhapita. See, sarva yonishu means not only human beings. He says even all the plants, animals, aquatics, birds, 8.4 million species of life, I am the father of all of them. I am the seed giving father of all of them. For all the yonis, the Lord only has given the jivas to be put in those yonis, like that he is saying. All the yonis are created by him. It is his, he is saying in this verse, Mama, Aham uh, Bija Pradhakapita, like you see in the picture here, isn't it? Yeah. The material nature is the mother and Krishna is the father. And Krishna expands as Lord Shiva in this world. Huh? Uh, so that Shiva and Parvati, they can become mother and father of the material world. Therefore, through the Shiva glance, he is giving all the jivas to Durga. Mm. And then by that, the jivas are impregnated into the material world. Yeah. Mm. So you can see the flowchart, Prabhupada's beautiful purport. Mm. He is the original father of all living entities. And we are all combination of jiv, jiv, um, you know, soul and uh, matter and spirit. Mm. And he will be father all, all times. Not only in the creation. After we get liberated and go back to God, he is our eternal master. Hmm. Yeah. Now in the verses 5 to 9, he is talking about the description of the uh, three gunas. Hmm. So, how uh, there is overview of modes given here. Hmm. Uh, the gunas are described here. What are the three gunas? What are their characteristics? Everything will be explained now. Hmm. So the origin of all beings from Prakriti and Purusha, uh, which are all subsidiary to Krishna, is now elaborated. Uh, in the mundane existence, existence of the same Jiva as a tiny so-called Purusha, uh, in conjunction with Prakriti. In next 14 verses described, uh, like you see in the picture here, uh, how in this world when Jiva is trapped in the body, Shabda, Sparsha, Rasa, Rupaganda, all of them attack him. Unless he is a liberated soul, he can't escape from all this. Sattvam rajastam iti guna prakriti sambhavaha Baho dehe dehe uh, he's saying um, how the living entity gets uh, 
condition in this world. Huh? So now we have a very important question is answered here. How the living entity gets conditioned in this world? Uh, it can be easily understood with a simple example. Just like there are laws of state, hmm? there are law abiders and there are law breakers. Hmm? The law abiders live in the country very happily, following the order of the prime minister, isn't it? And the law breakers, they are put in the jail. Hmm? So like you find somebody is handcuffed and put in the jail, isn't it? So uh, I told you yesterday an example how the jiva tries to become an imitator of God. I gave a very mild example of how sometimes a small boy wants to imitate his father who is a doctor. He wears his apron and he wears a stethoscope and tells his father, Papa, you get out of the hospital. I will sit here and I will attend to all the patients, which he can't do. In the same manner, when the jiva wants to take over the position of Krishna in the spiritual world by saying that, you know, I want to be the central figurehead, then that he can't do. So, Lord says, okay, go to the material world where you can be in a dreamy situation, where you can imagine that you are the center of the world and everything is revolving around you. For that, he provides the three modes facility, in whichever guna the jiva wants to be in, sattva, rajas, tamas. He can imagine himself to be the center. And therefore, he is sent to the jail of the material world, where the prison of the material world, and everybody there in the material world, Yes, uh, just like, very simple thing, you are uh, you are traveling in a car in India, you have to keep your car to the left side. If you are traveling in America, you have to keep the car to the right side. There are state laws. And if somebody doesn't follow the state law, then he has to be fined. If he doesn't pay the fine, then he has to be put behind the bars. Is it not true? Uh, can any of us say that I am a free citizen, I can do whatever I want? Huh? You know, everywhere there are laws. You are studying in a college, then there is some percentage of attendance to be followed. Hmm? Working in a company, you have to complete uh, some number of days per month you know, uh, working in a company and you'll be given salary accordingly. You know. Everywhere there are uh, laws. Uh, similarly, the living entity, uh, when he tries to become imitator of God, he comes to this world just like sometimes a girl tells her mother that, I want to cook in the kitchen, mom, you get out. Mother knows the little girl cannot cook. She purchases a toy set of cooking items. Uh, and she gives the little girl, she goes to a corner and she's cooking. Nothing <laughs> done. No one time she leaves it all and comes to mother for eating. Similarly, we all have come with the plate of this material body you know, and all these elements. Uh, and the three gunas are given, uh, which actually make us dance and uh, makes us think that we are doing everything. Uh, and then when we realize that actually I am Krishna Das, servant of Krishna, uh, foolishly I have come here and trying to enjoy separately. I won't be able to enjoy uh, independently, because I am a dependent jiva. Lord is independent. Hmm. We are dependent. Hmm. And Lord is master. We are a loving servant. Huh? So when we realize that, immediately we feel, oh, I have come to a wrong place now. Now I have to go back. Just like, for example, all of you, when you go to some unknown city sometimes, you walk on the road, sometimes you get lost in the road, isn't it? Then you find out the correct road by coming back and going to the right destination. So in really spiritual world is the right destination for us. Huh? So, therefore, we are studying Bhagavad Gita to return back to the correct destination, back home, back to Godhead. And the different bodies are about it, uh, different varieties of pleasures, what we are looking for. Uh, so how Krishna is kind, you can see. You know, we want a particular uh, uh, kind of action, so he gives us the particular type of body accordingly. In Sattva Guna, Raja Guna, Tama Guna, isn't it? Yeah, that will become more clear as we go here. See, here is a spirit soul. He comes in contact with the three gunas, as you see here, and then is conditioned to act in a certain way. For example, if you agree to play cricket, you know, you should know how to do batting, how to do running and get the score, isn't it? If you're playing chess, you know, you have to play in a certain manner, you have to keep the pawn. In a carom, you have to play like this. There is every game has a certain set of rules, what can be done and what cannot be done. Similarly, when the jiva comes in contact with the three gunas, the three gunas have the rigid rules, regulations, which in which he is trapped. Hmm? And then he has to follow those set of laws, which will become clear now as we proceed. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm. The gunas bind the jiva situated here by his identification with it. Due to the association with the gunas, uh, the uh, jiva, <coughs> who is actually unchangeable uh, and not attached, now he has become in a, in a certain situation, like you see the picture here, Sattva, Rajas, Tamas, they have their uh, respective natures as given here. Hmm. 
which will be described in the subsequent uh, shlokas. We will see. Actually, we have nothing to give and take with this material world at all. We are trying uh, happiness. Look at the pictures. Two pictures show you know, how we are trying happiness in so many different ways. But this is not going to make us happy because the soul cannot enjoy matter. The soul can only enjoy Supreme Spirit in His association. But here in this world, He is trying to enjoy the dead matter. And then He suffers more and more. So that's called illusion, moha, we call it. So all the so-called happiness and distress in this world, because they are all because of taking up different bodies. You see here? So all transformation of Mahat, Mahatattva is saying. So, yeah, the inert matter is also eternal, soul is also eternal. But when the soul gets trapped in that inert matter, namely our material body, then we keep on taking body after body after body for enjoying in different ways. Because we have different flavors of taste with which we want to enjoy, which is stored in our mind like a software. And then when we die, the mind comes to the soul. And then the, it wants, I want to enjoy this, I want to enjoy this. Then we are given a body to enjoy that particular taste. Huh? Like you see here, some people want to have pride and false prestige, ignorance, anger, envy, they glide down. Huh? There are others having a higher taste, like you know, study of the Vedas, austerity, sense control. Then they go upwards. Huh? In this way, uh, uh, you know, we have become soiled by matter. That's a nice word he has used, uh, you can see here. Huh? And uh, so how can we get out of this bondage? If any of you, while hearing this lecture, you feel that, oh, I think I made a mistake by coming here, and uh, how can I go back? We have shown the lotus feet of Krishna, you see. Only by the grace of Lord alone, by chanting the holy name, worshipping the deity form of the Lord, studying Bhagavad Gita and following it. Huh? Very simple, you follow the state laws, then you can live happily in the country. Huh? And if you break the state laws, then we are put in the jail. Very simple, as simple as that. Tatra Satvam Nirmalatpat Prakasham Prakashakamanamayam Sukha Sangena Badnati Jnana Sangena Chanagha. Now Krishna is going on to say that all the three gunas are binding. He says, including Sattva Guna also. He says, He says here, Moda goodness is the best amongst the three, certainly. It's purer than others. Because you know, we become free from all the sinful activities like meat eating, gambling, intoxication, illicit sex, and all that. Uh, so goodness is uh, better in that sense. So by giving up sinful activities, we become happy. Uh, and by studying the scriptures, we become knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. So jnanam and uh, you know, sukham. Uh, these are the two, two things we one gets. So one is happy. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada gives an example in his purports about scientist, philosopher and poet. Mm -hmm. So these are all people who have refined intelligence, isn't it? But often they become proud of the knowledge, jnanam. Mm. And when they become a uh, sense of happiness, they get, they gradually become complacent. They don't inquire about God. Mm. They become happy in their own poetry or philosophy or, you know, scientific inventions. So that is how it is binding, here he's saying. Uh, a typical uh, uh, person Satvaguna is Brahmana. Mm. Yeah. So mode of goodness means happy. Mode of passion means it is characterized by activity, hard work. Huh? Mode of ignorance means helplessly drink drunken and uh, or is a drug addict and people like that hmm. suffering. Uh, so knowledge and happiness are the characteristics of Satvaguna. Hmm. He is certainly wiser than others. He has um, advancement in knowledge. Hmm. He is not affected by material miseries because he is free from sinful activity. Look at this Brahmana family here below. Huh? They are uh, you know eating very nice prasad and leading a very clean life. So Krishna is uh, telling these things to Arjuna. The mode of goodness can be experienced when all the gates of the body are illuminated by knowledge. There are nine gates of the body. Uh, with eyes, we, we may study the scriptures. With ears, uh, we hear uh, nice uh, you know, classical uh, music or devotional music like that. So Satogana people like the family below, you see, the habits are all good habits, pure habits. So they become illumined in all the gates. Uh, so the word Anamayam is used without diseases. They live a very healthy life, body, mind, soul, all are healthy for these people, huh? like that. See, they eat very purely and everything. Hmm. Only the problem is, they become conditioned to think that, oh, I'm better than others, my life is quite good, my life is going on, I'm pretty happy. And they get stuck because they don't work for getting liberated from this world. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, see, the philosopher, 
poet, scientist. Eh? These are examples Prabhupada gives. And they will be keeping on taking repeatedly bodies like this again and again, hundreds and thousands of times, because they are not making an effort to go back to Krishna. They don't want to perform devotion service and get purified and go back to God. Uh, they come again and again. Yeah, that's the point. Rajo Ragatmagam Vidhi Trina Sanga Samudbhamam Tani Badna Tikaunteya Karma Sangena Dehinam. He's talking about Rajogan. The picture itself you see. He's chasing after the dollar note. <laughs> you can see that. Huh? So, compassion, it binds uh, uh, one by the ropes of attachment, rope, uh, desire and attachment. Uh, characters by strong attraction between man and woman. Uh, these two, Sangha and Trishna. Uh, Sangha means attachment between man and woman. And Trishna means thirst for honor, prestige, status, name, fame, glory, and popularity and things like that. And that's what is written below if you see. Uh, uh, like here you see, you know, a businessman, uh, you know, meeting some client and or um, meeting a business partner, talking about how to expand their business and how to make more money. They have no idea what is spiritual life, you know, what is the ultimate goal of human life. They don't think about all that. Huh? They may have some upper, uh, sometimes occasional religious activity as a kind of ritual, but they have no knowledge of the soul and the goal of the soul to go back to God and all that. Hmm? You see, they are happy in a small family, clicking selfies. Uh, Happy in the family life, just eat, sleep, you know, make, defend, and do business and make money and, and uh, you know, enjoy sex life. That's all they know. They, have, they don't have anything beyond that. We want just a happy family <laughs> with nice children and very good business, making a lot of money. We want some honor in society and status in society. He works very hard for achieving it. And that's all he knows. Um, so, even person in mode of goodness can uh, get stuck in the world. What speak of person in passion? Uh, he gets stuck. In this world. Same things I explained in the flow chart. So, Trishna means when one does not obtain one's desired objects. Like he wants more and more money, he doesn't obtain it. He has Trishna, thirst. Somehow I have to catch this so much of money he is running. And Sangha means when one obtains one's objects. The Rajaguna gives rise to these two. That means here a man has already got out of money. He has a big bungalow. He has a you know, good looking wife and good looking children and big car. And he's thinking that now I am very successful in life. So Sangha makes him proud of having obtained uh, the objects for enjoyment. And uh, Trishna makes him crazy huh? and chase after such things. Yeah, same things are said here, similar things by Acharyas. See here, uh, Sangha means he's an inordinate longing for union with one's sons, friends and such other relations, he says. Uh, yeah, it binds a person very strongly in this world. Tamasta jnana jam vidhi mohanam sarva dehinam pramadalas janidravis tannibadnati bharata. See here he says that the mode of darkness are tamaguna. It has three things nidra, alasya, pramad. He says, see this person he is having alasya, lazy, lying in the sofa here. Isn't it? Similarly, people who oversleep, night they sleep eight hours, they sleep another four hours. Five hours like that. That is Nidra. Nidra alas. Pramad means they're mad. Why? Because they drink, smoke, go for cabaret dances, and they take drugs. They put harmful agents into the body and they aggravate the problems in the body. Hmm. That is actually ignorance. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Now, this kind of uh, habits, bad habits. Hmm. Tamas produces ignorance. Here you see a person feels, uh, you know, lonely. Mm, insecure, you know, uh, and uh, sometimes lazy and panicky. Sometimes they cry, they feel depressed. Uh, they sometimes feel like committing suicide. Huh? And they are very lazy for spiritual understanding. Mom, they are very not interested. And they are mad. Why? Because they are always chasing after uh, working hard day and night, drinking, smoking, thinking that uh, life can go on like this. Mm. Yeah. So they don't uh, realize that everybody in this world uh, comes to pass one by one. Oh, who am I? What am I? They don't ask questions like that. They're always dejected and so always uh, absorbed in intoxicants and sleeping. Satvam suke sanjayati rajakarmani bharata jnana mavratya tuttamaha pramade sanjayatyuta He's saying, oh, son of Bharata, the mode of goodness conditions one's to happiness, he's saying. Huh? That is sukham badnati. Hmm? Satvam Sukhe Sanjayati. Hmm? 
and he is saying that passion conditions one to fruitive actions. Fruitive action means you have some material goal, you run after it. Hmm? And uh, ignorance, ignorance conditions one to madness, he says, three things. Hmm? All three are bound, he is saying. Hmm? Yeah. Like you see here, uh, Shippas Ramachari explains, uh, Pramada, madness means, look at these people are looking at the mobile <laughs> while crossing the road. There may be an accident. Huh? This person is coming in a staircase, but thinking something in the, in the mind, inattentive and neglectful, he is falling with his head down, you see. Huh? So inattention, negligence, these are all fatigue, driven errors, huh? mistakes, foolishness, uh, insecurity, depression, all these things are tamaguna actually. Huh? Yeah. And these people never work hard like passionate people, but they always dream, like you see here in the picture. They're dreaming people. Hmm. Yeah. So now we understood the qualities of the Sattvaguna, Rajaguna, Tamaguna, all three are binding, even Sattva is binding. So one thing becomes clear. Just like if I wear a, this kind of plain specs with a yellow color uh, cover, yellow color uh, paper, it'll, everything will look yellow. If you wear red color paper, everything will look red. If you wear a black color paper, everything will look black. So these are the three colors which one may wear as specs. Similarly, these people are wearing three different colors called gunas. And we have to remove all the three. And then you'll be able to see everything in a plain vision. And you'll get that is Vishuddha Sattva. See things as they are, Pandita Samadarshina. So that will come in the future verses. How to go beyond the three gunas. Krishna will teach us. But we all can observe these three gunas in the world outside. Uh, I have, we have clearly learned some symptoms. Uh, that is Sattva Guna means Sukham Jnanam, Rajoguna means Sangha Trishna, Tamaguna means Nidra Alasya Pramad. Now you start observing the world around you. Wherever you find these things, you can know which place is Tamaguna, Rajoguna, Sattvaguna. The liquor shop is in Tamaguna. A big shopping mall is in Rajoguna. Uh, like a Brahmana in the temple, going temple, it is Sattvaguna. Actually, Krishna temples where you do devotion service, that is beyond Trigunas. It's in Vaikuntha, Prabhupada said. Hmm. 